Namaste everybody. Welcome to the part 2 of the episode on collection of data. In the first part, we had talked about the definition and the purpose of collection of data. And in today's session, we are going to deal about the various methods of collecting the primary and secondary data. So, as discussed in the previous episode, that primary data is the one which has been calculated or collected for the first time originally by the investigator for his own purpose. Whereas, the secondary data is the one which is collected previously or which has been published or not published and which has already been collected and the researcher would like to reuse it for his purpose based on the requirement. So, let us see what is the basic difference between the primary data and the secondary data based on the originality, suitability and the cost of collection. Coming to the originality, as we all know that the primary data is original in nature because it is the investigator who is collecting for the first time for his own purpose directly. So, it is collected by the investigator from the source of origin. It is the investigator or the researcher who is responsible for collecting the information in case of primary data. Whereas, the secondary data, the data already exists, somebody else has already collected it and the investigator would like to reuse it. Hence, it is not original in nature for the person who is using it as a, a secondary data. Coming to the suitability, this type of data is relative to a specific objects because the researcher knows what is his object, objective and what are the various data that he requires. So, it does not need any adjustment for the concerned studies because he is very clear with what are the information that he requires, what are the data he requires and from whom and what data he needs to gather is very clear with the researcher. Whereas, in case of secondary data, this type of data is already collected from other purposes. So, some that is the reason why sometimes minor adjustments, minor alterations need to be made with the data in case of the secondary data. Regarding the cost of the collection, the primary data is costlier in terms of the time, money and the efforts. Whereas, it is less expensive as they are easily available from various electronic and print media. Either it could be published or it may not be published. But one need to be very careful to use all the secondary data from some reliable sources like from government organizations, from some health departments, from, from some records which is said to be authentic. So, let us because if we are clear with which type of data you require whether it is a primary data or a secondary data, whether you are going to collect the data by yourself for the first time or you would like to use the pre-existed data or already occurring data, the methods are quite different. There are various methods of primary data collection. So, as I said primary data collection are those methods which are collected by the investigator for the first time original in nature and for the purpose of the researcher. There are different methods of primary data collection and some of the important methods includes the observation method, the indirect and direct over oral interviews, the questionnaire method, the experimental method from various local agents and the survey method. The observation method where the investigator observes the participant and makes the note of the participant very commonly it is practiced or used in case of the behavioral sciences. Whereas, the indirect oral interview is the most oftenly used method where there is one to one interview or the interview could happen in group. The questionnaire method where a set of questions are prepared and given for the evaluation. The experimental method where various types of uh, experiments, laboratory investigations or techniques are used for the investigation or collecting the data. From the local agents where there could be the 
there could be a group of people who could be approached for collecting the data about a, a group of people or there could be various survey methods where they are trying to interact directly with the participant or the volunteers either directly or through telephone or through mail where the necessary informations are gathered. See each of this method has its own advantage and disadvantages and there are some specific guidelines for conducting or using these methods. So, each of these method we are going to discuss in detail about what are these methods, what are the definition of these methods, what are the careful guidelines or the specific guidelines that we can have to utilize in this data collection methods and what are the merits and demerits of these methods. So, we will try to discuss them one by one starting with the, the direct personal observation or in general called as observation method. See observation is a method under which data from the field is collected with the help of observation by the observer or by personally going into the field. So, the investigator or the researcher will himself go to the actual field and observe the volunteers or the participant directly. So, it is more often a direct observation like more of a, a darshana pariksha which a person will be utilizing to gather the necessary information. And as <coughs> Eng has said about this observation method as observation may be defined as a systematic viewing coupled with consideration of seen phenomena. You would like to know what is the things going on and what could be the possible reason for that like a, a ca causal and the effect phenomena is trying to be established in case of the observation. This is very commonly used in case of the behavioral sciences like suppose a person wants to know why a person is behaving where he is behaving or suppose a person would like to use for some form of skin diseases or obesity or some neurological disorders. So, a person can easily diagnose with the help of or could always collect the data based on these methods. There are different types of observation basically we can divide them into structured observation and unstructured observation, participant observation and non-participant observation. So, what do you mean by this structured observation? If the data collection is done in a very systematic manner with the fulfillment of all the prerequisite, then it is called as structured observation. So, suppose you have made a, a clear list of what are the things that you are going to observe in a, a study. Suppose you are doing a study on diabetes mellitus or suppose you are doing a study on depression or suppose you are doing a study on osteoarthritis. All the necessary information that you would like to gather everything the list the checklist of all this are made and there is a proper case report or a case file and everything is documented as per the need. But if a systematic approach is not taken towards the data collection then it is called as unstructured. To be on a simple words when the data method collection of observation is very systematic and it follows a systematic protocol it is called as structured when it is not following a particular structure it is called as unstructured. But in some cases they also follow something called as partially structured and partially unstructured which you call as semi structured observation. Whereas, there is one more classification of observation called as participant and non-participant observation. When the observer becomes a part of the sample understanding the emotional, socio cultural, occupational background of the study it is called as participant observation. Like for example, you are from a particular tribal group or you are from a particular group of uh, people or whom you are studying like a Ayurvedic student studying about the 
attitudes of an Ayurvedic student, then he becomes a, a participant observer. Okay. Suppose you know everything about a particular uh, emotional, psychological, social background of the participant and you are also the part of this particular culture or the background, it is called as the participant observation. But when the observer is not, is not a part of the sample and he does not know much about the background of the participant. Like for example, you go and to some other continent or some other country and you would like to do some observation or some particular studies like an Indian researcher scholar conducting a research about the, the culture and the lifestyle or the eating habits of London, then this becomes a non-participant observation. Okay. So, this is one of the way of classifying the observation. So, earlier we had talked about the structured observation and the non-structured and now we are talking about the participant and the non-participant observation. So, what are the various uses or suitability of this method? So, a greater accuracy is wherever you use it where you need a greater accuracy because if you want to have you want to be in that touch with this participant and you would like to have more accurate or greater accuracy is need, needed and this method would be helpful. When the, the number of data are not large because when the data are large this method may not be very suitable. There is a small group of participant or there are a small number of people who are involved in this study and you want to observe this participant then you can always use the direct personal observations and wherever you would like to keep the data very confidential because there is no much of a interaction with the participant. So, always you can keep the information secure as well as confidential and where you have sufficient time for the because this needs some time and because there are not many researcher or investigator who will be collecting the data like it will be the either the principal investigator or the co-investigator who will be collecting the information and you have need to have sufficient time to gather the information. So, what are the merits and demerits of this method of the personal observation or the direct personal observation? So, in case of the direct personal observation, so as we do not have any interaction there is with the respondent, so there is no question of respondent bias because if like for example, you talk with the patients and patient instead of giving that he is suffering with the joint pain, if it does not give this information then there is chance of the respondent bias. But in case of observation method when you are just trying to observe and gather the information, so there is no question of the respondent bias. So, so you do not you are not bothered about the past and the future in case of the observation method. What is more important by this method is the current situation or the present knowledge and you need do not need a active participation of the participant or active cooperation is not required. See those who are not cooperative or those who would not like to be accessible to you. So, they also can be observed in this method. But as you know this can be because there are very few uh, investigators and uh, you need to have a lot of observation need to be done by a, a single investigator or the researcher. Sometimes it could be very expensive and it may require a lot of time. But the problem, the major problem with this is you may not get the complete information. Suppose you know that okay, this is a patient suffering with obesity and you feel that yes this patient suits or fits into your research. But what could be the cause of his uh, obesity, what is his eating habits, what is the familial background or history of this patient okay. and since how long he is suffering with this weight gain, a complete information may not be and there could be so many hidden or unforeseen factors which could contribute that to the present situations. And suppose the data are quite large, you want to study on a very large number of samples, this method may not be very, very suitable. Coming to the next method which you call as the interview method, uh, which is a 
very commonly or frequently used method in medical research or life sciences where there is a verbal stimulation by the investigator or the interviewer and the client or the participant is going to respond to this particular question. In simple words, it could be the question and answer method of gathering the necessary information. It is a way of interrogation. You interact with the patients, you talk with the patients and gather the necessary information in case of the interview method. So, it is a systematic method where the questions are asked to the participants and the participants is required to give the verbal response to the question that is put forward by the investigator. It is a relationship between, it is a professional relationship between the interviewer and the interviewee. Interviewer is the one who is going to take the interview and interviewee is the one who is going to give the interview. So, there could be various method of uh, this uh, oral interview which could be uh, standardized interview or non-standardized interview, direct interview or indirect interviews. Like standard when it has a particular format it is called a standardized and when it is not very we do not follow a protocol or when we have lot of scope for flexibility and the moderation in case of the questions it is called as non-standardized interviews. And more than that it could be direct interview where we directly talk with the participant or sometimes suppose you would like to have an extra information about the participant. You can also use the indirect method of investigation from the third person who is known to the participant or where you feel that the complete information about the, the problem is not gathered by the direct investigating the patients. So, it could be structured interviews or unstructured interviews based on the format. It could be one to one like face to face interview which is commonly called as a clinical method or the interview method. This there could be telephonic interviews or there could be internet mediated interviews or there could also involve many people who are expert of a particular uh, area or particular subject and they all can be pulled together and a focus group discussion can be carried out. There are some important qualities or characteristics features of an interviewer. So, he should be polite, he should be honest, sincere, impartial, at the same time should have all the technical competence with necessary practical experiences and he should make the person who is being interviewed very comfortable. So, he should be friendly with the interview because once a person has these qualities, he will be able to gather the information more easily, more in depth and more authentic and reliable information can be gathered. So, whenever a person is conducting the interview, there are some guidelines like he should know what is a research problem, what who is a participant and what other necessary information because unnecessary questions which are not related to the research should never be asked. So, he should be very well planned, he should be competent enough to gather the necessary information, should have a good environment where he is conducting the interviews. At the same time, the environment should be very calm, cool. Like for example, you are sitting in a middle of a, a ward, a busy general ward, may not be ideal to gather the necessary information that too about some psychological problems or some sexual disorders or some reproductive health etcetera. And the interviewer should have be friendly and should be able to facilitate the informal talks. Should have, should be a very good listener, should have curiosity and a respect to the participant and whenever he is asking a question, it should be in a very simple language not a very flowery language, you should not use a, your vocabulary to show your importance in front of the patient or the volunteer. Instead, should put a, a clear, simple, understandable way, well phrased question should be there. Ok. 
okay suppose you want to know about the disease condition like i feel that you have something to say so can you please open up and define what is your problem since how long you have this problem with your sleep since how long you have problem with your mood and how since how long you have been not been able to manage your anger so if you can elaborate about this particular issues it will be easy for me to understand your problem and help you so there could be this should be some clearly easily framed uh, questions need to be asked to the patient and you should not ever hurt the interviewer okay so a person might have committed some mistakes or some uh, the person might have uh, gone wrong somewhere you should not emotionally or hurt the the feelings or the attitude of the the person and all this information that you are collecting should be confidential and should not be revealed for anybody and especially the name and the vital data should never be shared with anybody and all the information should be kept very very confidential so if all these things are taken into consideration then it becomes very easy for the investigator to gather the necessary information so again this interview could be of various types like the structured interview and the unstructured interview where the structured interview involves a set of questions which a researcher asked in a, a fixed order there is a format for this whereas unstructured are opposite to that here the interview has a number of topics to cover and but the precise questions may not be in order and it based on the need based on the respondent a person can always change the order so when it is done one to one it is called as the the direct or the indirect interview but if it is done as a group then it is called as focus group discussion or focus group interview where there will be a facilitator or a moderator who is going to facilitate or fix a particular topic of discussion and there will be opinion from various participant or experts and the opinion are pooled and the conclusion is drawn about a, a particular topic of discussion so a focus group interview is an unstructured interview which involves a moderator leading to a discussion between a small group of respondent on a particular topic like for example discussion in the department regarding the blood donation camp under the guidance of or facilitation of the head of the department okay so where the opinions are pooled from the students from the other faculties and we plan a particular a program or a seminar or a camp is organized okay so when each of them are given chances their opinions and everything is noted down and based on the feasibility the opinion is taken up this is called as focus group discussion so what is the use of this particular interview so it is more suitable when the area is studied is to be large when you have you need larger information in depth information this is an ideal method so it is used when the direct information cannot be obtained see sometimes the indirect information can be used where you feel that the direct information cannot be used like for example you would like to person who is psychologically disabled so or small children or elderly who is not in a position to give you the information about his health condition there you can always use the indirect method of a oral interviews okay or like this system is generally adopted by governments sometimes when they want to gather the larger information or in a, a clinical setup it is simple and convenient it saves a lot of time money and labor and especially uh, all the adequate information that you require about a participant can be gathered and most important thing is you can always have you can be flexible you can always restructure the question based on the need and you get a more comprehensive complete information about the participant by the interview method whereas the information cannot be relied because sometimes there could be respondent bias okay the person who is responding may not give the authentic or reliable information so there could be respondent bias 
or with an improper person who is not trained the whole uh, things could be spoiled and the results may not be conclusive. And uh, in order to get the real position a sufficient number of people are to be interviewed like the, the sample size should be sufficient to gather the informations. And sometimes the carelessness attitude of the informant will affect the degree of accuracy both it is the responsibility of both the interviewer as well as the interview to take this exercise very seriously and all the necessary information need to be gathered about the a particular research work. And the most important demerit as we discussed is about the respondent bias and it is quite time consuming. Suppose there are very few number of uh, experts or the investigators and suppose you want to have a detailed uh, analysis or the data collection of a large number of samples then it could be quite time consuming by this particular method. So, this is all about the interview method. So, with this we complete the part 2 of the session on collection of data. Thank you.